me out. Your grade is going to be bad. Okay, number two. If you are just looking at a picture and you're asked to figure out which equation matches that picture, you can use your street smarts. You'll have iPads or your phones. You can plug this in and look at the picture. You can plug this in and look at the picture. Look, So you can check yourself. This is definitely not linear because it's not a straight line. It's definitely not quadratic because all quadratics have a point of symmetry somewhere. They reflect. So this has to be exponential. Okay, this is a great problem. On the test, I'm going to give you one that will not use any decimals. It will all be whole numbers like the fence corral building that we did. So look at number three. This is kind of like the gutter problem. Let's make a table. And then let's do width and length. So your paper is six feet. Feet. That's the number one thing you need to know. You're going to fold it so that you only have a bottom and two sides. You're not going to have a top. So if you choose your width, I guess let's do width and let's call this guy the width. And this can be the length. So if this is one you know this also has to be one right so how much of the paper have you used you have used two how much of the paper is there total so when the width is one what is the length what five all right knuckleheads how long is this piece right here if this is one and this is one you've used one plus one you've used two there's only six. Six take away the two you've used. This bottom has to be four. What if we change the numbers? What if we say the height or the width is going to be two and two? How much have you used now? You've used 2 plus 2. You've used 4. There's 6 total. What's 6 take away 4? So that means when the sides are too high, the base has to be too long, right? So the problem on the test will be using panels and fences. So you can only use whole number amounts. This problem is kind of tricky because what if I say this? what if I use a rational number what if we use the side as being 1.5 and 1.5 so if it's 1.5 tall on both sides how much have you used now so if I sneak in a 1.5 here how long is the base going to be the base is going to be 3 and you know what we could sneak in any rational amount I could sneak in what if I sneak this in? What if I sneak in 1.2 and 1.2? How much have we used now? 1.2 plus 1.2. You used 2.4. How much is there left if you've used 2.4? What's 6 take away 2.4? 3.6? Yeah, 3.6. So 1.2 is going to give you 3.6. But, so Jordan, what I'm saying is, on the test, there's going to be no rationals. It's all going to be whole numbers because you're going to be using panels. One panel, two panel, three panels, four panels. Here's what I want, though. I want you to create a general rule. So what if I say instead of a number? So let's just recall what we did. If this was 1 and this was 1, we did step 1. You did 1 plus 1, and that equals 2. Step 2, you took the total minus 2, and that gave you 4. Step 3, what was your third step? Oh, that was it, right? There's only two steps. 
Okay. So now, what if I say this is x tall and this is x tall? How am I going to find out the length if the width is x? Move number one. You're going to do x plus x, which is equal to 2x. Okay, move number two. What did you do once you've got the total? You subtract it from the total. 6 take away what you've used. What's 6 take away 2x? It is just 6 take away 2x. Okay, now add one more column. This is going to be the same on the test. You're going to have to, now that we've got the width and the length, how do you calculate the area? You just multiply them, all right? Length times width. 1 times 4 is going to be 4. 2 times 2 is also going to be 4. And I don't know what 1.5 times 3 is or 1.2. But this is what I want to know. What is the area if your height is x and your length is 6 minus 2x? What do you do with those guys? You're going to have to times them. So what is x multiplied by 6 minus 2x? It's going to be 6x minus 2x squared. This is the formula for the area. That's what we want right there. Okay, on your calculator. You guys got your iPads. If I punch this into my calculator, so if you add a graph, if you go into your iPad and you add a graph, and you add this rule into your graph, 6 minus, whoa, 6 minus 2x squared is that what it was 6 minus 2x squared if you add that to your graph it should be some kind of quadratic so we're expecting a parabola okay this is going to be your maximum so Jordan at this point right here that's where your maximum is that's the largest it gets that's the biggest the area is going to be if you go into, do you see right here above trace we've got calc and in your iPad it's going to be hit the wrench and you can calculate. You can calculate a maximum. So if I go down to 4 and I calculate a maximum, the left bound, so if I sandwich it somewhere between the left and the right, the maximum is going to be right here at 6. So the largest area I can create with that paper is going to be 6. If I use this for the width, for the height, if you use 2.0 something. So that question is a little bit intense. The one on the test, I'm going to you have got to come up with this for the test and you're good you've got to come up with this right here for the test and you're good you have got to tell me how you're getting these numbers generally so just use X and then to get the area you multiply them together if you can do that you're fine no this can be on YouTube tonight probably yeah, or it's just on Power School, or you t either way. But it'll be posted to their grade. Okay. Look at this. So we just barely did this. If I give you two graphs, these are both linear. They want you to add them. And then they want you to subtract them. So look at this. 
I'm going to show you kind of a shortcut. Take this dot right here and this dot right here. So this is for g of x. This is for f of x. Okay, g. So both of these dots happen to be when x is 0. So g, if I go 0, I'm going to go all the way up to 6. And on f, if I go 0, I go all the way up to 3. So my new one, which is h, they want you, at that same sp spot 0, they want you to add the outcomes. So 6 plus 3 is going to be 9. So at 0, 9, I'm going to have a dot. And I can do that for my picture. If I just take the y, take this 6, take this 3, add them together, I know I'm going to have a dot right here at 9. Take this dot right here and this dot. So these dots on G are all going to be 6. Now I'm going to add 6 to 4 because I'm 4 high. That's going to be 10. And I'm going to take 6 and add it to 6. Or not, these aren't 6, these are 5s, right? They're not 6s, they're all 5s. I'm sorry. So it's going to be 5 plus 3, and it's not going to be 9. 5 plus 3 is going to give you 8. 2 plus 5 should give you 7. So I'm going to have a dot right here at 0 and 8. And then if I go over 1, this dot is at 4 and this dot is at 5. So I'm going to add 4 plus 5. If I go over 1, I'm going to take the 4 plus the 5 and that's, my new dot's going to be at 9. And then if I go over 2, I'm going to have a dot at, holy crap, did I just change these? This G of X, these are the ones that are 5's. So over 2 up 5, over 3 up 5, these are always 5, over 4 up 5. F, if I go over 2, I'm going to also be at 5. So if I go over 2, I'm going to take my two 5's, add them together, and you are ending up at 10. So this line right here is what it should look like. It should be parallel to F, but it's shifted up five units higher. And what happens if you subtract them? It's going to be parallel, but it's going to be shifted. Every dot is going to be shifted down five units. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to have a dot. One, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be parallel. It's just going to be down five units. Okay, for the test, you will not have to identify two rules, just one rule. So if you can come up with one rule, you're in good shape. To get that one rule, if you can imagine what design 100 looks like, then it's going to be a piece of cake. So you need to start looking at dimensions. On design 4, how tall is it? Probably just this chunk right here. And how wide is it? It's 5 tall and it's 3 wide. Design 3, how tall and how wide is this? four tall and two wide and then design two how tall and wide is this three tall and one wide and then it, they're always gonna have two blocks as like a tail or something so design 100 how tall and how wide is it gonna be if design four is five tall design three is four tall design two is three tall how tall is design 100 it's gonna be 100 and one how wide is the base going to be? 
is going to be 100 minus 1 because design 4 is only 3 wide, design 3 is 2 wide. And then you're going to have these two blocks right here. So design X, how tall and how wide is design X going to be? So the height is going to be one bigger, but the base is going to be one smaller. And then at the end of that, you're going to have plus two. So now, if I want to calculate all these squares in between them, on design 4, I do 3 times 5, and I get 15. Plus the 2, I get 17. On design, you take the base times the height. So on design X, you're going to take the base times the height. Base times height, and then when you're all done, plus 2. And you can stop right here. This is perfect. You can call that good. This formula right here will give me the total number of blocks. But if you want to distribute that through and simplify that, you can do that. And that will also be full credit. Now, is this growing at a linear rate, a quadratic rate, or an exponential rate? Why is it growing at a quadratic rate? Because it is going to have some... If you distribute these through, you're going to have an x squared. Your second rate of change is constant. It's growing. Quadratics grow in two dimensions. It grows in height and in length. The bases get wider, they get taller. So it's grown in two dimensions from picture to picture. Okay, same thing here. So I should have labeled. This is figure number one. This is figure number two, number three, number four. So can you imagine number 100? It's going to have something down here, two little squares right here, but then it's going to have something right here. Because if you can do 100, we can do picture number X just as easy. So 100. What about this bottom square on 4? What are the dimensions of this guy? It's 4 by 4. What about 3? 3 by 3. So this one looks like it's going to be easy. 2 by 2. So on picture 100, what's it going to be? It's going to be 100 by 100. So on picture X, what's it going to be? It's going to be X by X. So whatever the number is, that's the dimensions of that. Okay, these two squares are common on every piece. So let's just identify the dimensions of this top rectangle. It's 3 by 4 on the 4th. On the 3rd, it's 3 by 3. On the 2nd, it's 3 by 2. On the 1st, it's 3 by 1. How wide and tall is it on picture 100? It looks like the base never changes. It's going to be 3. The only thing that changes is how tall. It's going to be 3 by 100. And so on picture X, what's the base going to be? going to be 3. That never changes. How tall is it going to be? It's going to be x. So how many cubes do you have right here if it's x tall and x wide? x times x is x squared plus, you got the two cubes here, x squared plus 2, plus how many squares you got right here if it's 3 wide and x tall? 3x. So your number of cubes is going to always equal this formula. You're going to have x squared for your bottom square plus you're going to have 3x for your top square or rectangle and then you're going to have these two in the middle. And is this linear, exponential, or quadratic? 
Why is it quadratic? And why is it quadratic? Because your second changes. You got a, the biggest exponent is this two squared. It's quadratic, same as last time. These are ch this is why it's quadratic. Because these squares right here, from picture to picture, they're not only getting taller, but they're also getting wider. So you're changing in two dimensions. It gets taller and wider. These rectangles right here, these are linear. Because the width never ever changes. It always stays 3, 3, 3, 3. But from each picture to each picture, it gets taller and taller. Okay, you guys start putting your stuff up. Okay, number four. You have a substance that every day it decays, 